I'd like to first off start by saying that I'm, I'm really happy to see that you all made it out today. I am, however, a little sad to say that they could not take the time to hear me rhyme live on the spot. Nope. Their status has been set to too busy looking too hot. Hot as Firefox, where you too could have stopped, dropped dead, and rolled over the top of the world by now if only you had chosen to. But no, it's not like that. See, I know you, and you are not like them. You are what I like to call human. A true friend with true strength who inspires me to do new things without a help menu bar. One who serves as a constant reminder to never doubt myself. Yes, you are something else. You are what they cannot human manufacture, even if they tried. Always keeping in mind that it is mind over matter, never matter over mankind. Mind you that I'm not trying to take any sides here because I do care about them too. It's just that... They are so not like you. Their call of duty rest upon protest after protest as they go from one blocked user to the next, posing with the oppressed set of crash test dummies who wave anti-virus signs around everywhere they go just in case of an attack from those eight-legged bugs. All the while holding on onto what seems like this never-ending grudge between them and the end list of the infamous internet thugs who are constantly threatening to bust a caps lock in each other's backspace. Till this day I keep telling them to take control, create an alternative for deleting each other's history, but they just tell me they can't escape, can't go to the library when the superhuman race is on. They're too busy inserting their keywords, firing up their search engines. Hard driving at 120 words per minute, space bar hopping from address to address while keeping a tab on secret access to sites like www.donttellmymom.com. Suffering from the sweaty palm syndrome, sitting at home closed in by firewalls and boarded up windows with a wishbone in between their legs as they get a head start on sexual education from Miss JPEG. <laughs> Rolling on the floor laughing. Practicing impatience. They are the type who cannot wait for fate to happen, and I can tell this by the way they say some things like LSHMBA or PTW, by the way, translates to laughing so hard my belly aches. For heaven's sakes, those bags underneath their eyes have been filled with so much addictive crap they can barely close their lids at night. And despite the poison inside the Apple Mac, they are still taking more and more gigabytes. Trust me, I've tried telling them about the simple life, about how much less is really so much more. But it's hard to tell them such a thing when their attention span runs about for as long as their power cords. I swear, at times I wish I was less of a human, more of a bug, so I can infect them with enough viruses to make them want to pull the plugs out from the back of their brains. Show them in person love and affection. It isn't just simply cut and paste, but custom made because love and lust is not the same. But my point is, how are they supposed to know that when they are strapped down to that lazy boy chair without a care in the world to go outside, go to the library, and breathe in the fresh air? Wish they could have been here. Live on the poetry scene where we speak in front of fans to blow away the low self esteem. Wish I could hold their hands and take them up on stage with me. Uninstall all their programs and let them run free. Let them stay dive into a pool full of cool human beings. Let them swim upstream up where there are no machines. Not until they swim up there will they truly see what I mean. Your computer is on fire and it's burning to the extreme. So I want to take you all out for a swim so you could see what I mean. Technology is taking over these days, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's the way of the future, it's the way of the communication, you know, it's, it's what we're using to communicate with people overseas. It's, you know, things are moving a lot faster. It's a fast-paced world, and it seems like we've evolved for a very long time, from ancient scriptures to the printing press and to now, a world where everything is being digitized, everything is digital. 
Not everything. We still got, we've still got books. We've still got carriers of civilization. Um, but for me, I find like it's a good balance to have to have both. Like I, I got a almost two year old son, and he's always on on the computer saying, "Cheers, George, 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 George." And you know, as much as possible, we try to to give him an alternative, which which are books, something that doesn't require looking at a screen 24 hours a day. Um, and I know it's the way of the future. Like how many how many of you have cell phones or have cell phones in class? All of you? Don't lie. I know you're in there. I was just at Vince Massey for the last two weeks doing a spoken word workshop, and half of the class were writing their poems on their phones. And I thought, man, you know, we didn't have this back in the day. And I'm still fairly young, but to me it's crazy to think that that this is the future, you know, as opposed to taking time, reading out a book, or taking, pu pulling out a paper and taking time to write everything out. So, but that's just the way that it's moving. Um, I, you all know that quote, and it's kind of cliche, but go back, you know, understand your history to know where you're going, know the future. Um, so yeah, it's all about balance. How many of you here, um, Take the time to go out downtown or a anywhere in the public library and make use of the library. Great, I'm happy to see that. Um, for me, I feel like it's a great place, it's a safe place to go to and not only receive knowledge, but create a place to, to develop more knowledge and share knowledge with other people. Um, whether you use it as a place to study or Use, use the computers or the internet or, or, or dig for, for whatever. Or maybe if it's just a novel that, that you really like to, to find and just to cool out and relax. But the library is a very special place uh, for everyone and we should be fortunate enough to have this access to, to information and, and knowledge. Um, I have a, a piece that I'd like to do uh, that deals with books. Uh, how many of you are fans of Dr. Seuss? Wait, chance. The greatest rapper of all time. <laughs> all right. This is inspired by my son and my mother, who taught me to read at a very young age, who I'm very fortunate to have. It started with the letter I, as I began my journey into the center of the earth, 20,000 leagues under the sea sounding out the key to the magic school bus that would drive me from point A to point Z, exercising my voice with a choir full of curious George type of kids who would acquire the gift of being able to sing, now I know my alphabets. Stories stored in the treasure chests of my mind where the jewels became the tools that allowed me to enter this wonderful world of rhymes in between punch lines where I read that fiction could fly, and I could rock 500 thinking caps like Bartholomew if I really wanted to picture what my life of pie could look like if I ran the zoo with the yurtle, the turtle, the cat in the hat, and Horton who heard a hoop. Oh, the places you'll go when you become your own Dr. Seuss. I told myself, you'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing the great sights. You'll join the high flies who will soar to high heights. Imagination connected my love with my life like fingers interlocked that helped boost my inner fox in smelly socks up to the windows of opportunity where I could watch myself pronounce verbs, adjectives, pronouns from all these profound poems that I would soon proudly call my own, unlocking the mystery of how to build these inner Sherlock homes. Some that would become solid like mortars and bricks, not fragile like straws and sticks. And who knew you could learn so much from three little pigs and a big bad wolf who taught us to never poke the patience of the adults with a pointy Pinocchio nose, lessons that were taught to us so that the truth could be told and we could grow from our old elementary habits on the new ones. Yes, I remember the days when we would turn the page into the new chapters in our life story that gave most kids goosebumps. Not quite ready to grow up yet, 
I was still sporting Thomas's snowsuit and 50 below zero, protesting against boring middle school textbook information saying, Robert Munch will forever be my hero. You can't replace him or take away the lives of any of these cool carriers of civilization. I was the pony boy in the band of outsiders, hesitant to be a little adventurous and make some new friends, telling myself, why the hell do I want to hang out with Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? And no offense to Jack Kerouac, but I was not ready to be back on that road again. I was moving as slow as Franklin, passing up the time where I never imagined that I would grow so attached to these books, but I did, and who could blame a kid for loving what it gave and loving what it still gives today? Amazing with its grace, it saves lives. Keeps us on the hunt like Harry and Spy with an eye out for more secret gardens in your mind. I cannot deny that once upon a time, like many others, held on so dearly to the sweet company of my red dog Clifford and my gangsters, the Bernstein Bears, the paper bag princess, the Grinch who stole Christmas, James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, our childhood family of mystery and fantasy who opened up the doors to new platforms from which we could form our own opinions. I love her twisting stories like my name was Charles Dickens. Now listen, I'm not talking about authors. I'm talking about magicians. We're not just some bits of information. I'm talking about immortals who have buried their body languages in these pages. And because they have done so, they will live on for many more ages to come. I'm talking about storytellers who inspire storytellers to tell stories about stories that will never, ever, really, ever be done. Stories that are too good to ever be stopped. Unless the end were to end with a dot. Dot, dot. You are the future of our library. <laughs> so it's all on you. Um, I want you to keep that in mind. Be excited, be, be excited, be fortunate, realize that we are in a very fortunate place to have our voices be heard where our opinions actually do matter and that we have the power to shape the world we live in. So, my name is Nario, I'm, a, I'm an artist, and um, I'm happy to be here and share my words with you.